We have Jerry Beeney, partner and head of capital markets for Grant Thornton, a leading financial and business services company. We'll be discussing the role of a nominated advisor for AIM companies. Now, Jerry, what is a nomad and what does a nomad do? Perhaps I could uh, put that in context a little by, by giving you uh, some history of the AIM market or alternative investment market as it was formerly known. The AIM market was created in 1995 by the London Stock Exchange uh, and it was created to be deliberately uh, different from our main market in London with a focus on smaller growing companies. So for example, companies coming to AIM didn't have to have a three year trading record. AIM doesn't specify a minimum number of mm. shares in public hands. There's less regulation and less ruling. So less regulations, the rule book's much shorter, there's only about 40 rules and perhaps we can come on to some of those uh, a bit later. So for designed for smaller growth oriented companies, um, but the exchange realised that many of these companies were entrepreneurial driven uh, and perhaps the people uh, involved in those companies didn't have sufficient background and experience to run a public company. So the, one of the other ways that they distinguished the market was to create this role of nomad or nominated advisor. The nomad role is, is very, very important and, and can perhaps be illustrated by uh, the fact that if a company, for, for whatever reason, loses its nominated advisor, uh, the company's shares are immediately suspended from trading. On, on, on the stock mm -hmm. market. There's nobody to oversee uh, the regulations. Precisely, that, that's exactly the point. So there's no one to, there's no one to, to oversee the company's activities mm, from, from, from a market standpoint. So, so there could be some risks there, uh, particularly in light of the fact that these companies are smaller, perhaps earlier stage companies, and perhaps deemed not to have the experience of, of some of the more established companies on the main, on the main market. So, a rule in there that says if you lose your nomad for whatever reason, your shares are immediately suspended from trading. Guess what? It gets worse. <laughs> if you don't replace your nomad within 30 days, you're delisted. So you have to go through the, the, the process. Yeah. Uh, it can of, be hard for a company to find a new nomad at times? Or? Well, there are about 90 uh, nominated advisors uh, operating in, in the city of London. Uh, so d depending on, on, on the reasons why the company and its nomad came, came, to, came to part, uh, then the, ordinarily there wouldn't be any uh, difficulty in finding another nomad. But again, I think it's important to, for the incoming nominated advisor to fully understand mm -hmm. what perhaps went wrong, if anything, with, with the mm -hmm. previous relationship. Nothing may have gone no wrong. No court of law, perhaps. Well, well, <laughs> possibly, but well, hopefully not. But, but, but perhaps the you know most most commonly companies outgrow their existing advisors perhaps mm -hmm. as they're as they're growing in size they need to raise more money and some nomads and uh, which have related uh, stop broking uh, f um, uh, arms uh, to, to to raise much some companies some brokers and nomads are better at raising large sums of money than others. Mm -hmm. So yeah. sometimes a company outgrows its mm -hmm. nomad and broker and wishes to move up. Okay, so how so that would be a good reason. Yeah, so let's just uh, look at Grant Thornton. How many companies do you look after at the moment uh, as a, a nomad? We look after about 50 companies, mm -hmm. uh, although over the years we've acted as nomad to 250 companies. That makes us one of the most active uh, nomads uh, in the country uh, and indeed the most active independent nominated advisor, that means we do not have a brokerage capability. So we, we're unable to sell shares into the market. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a, a decision that I've taken deliberately um, to differentiate ourselves uh, from others in the marketplace. And also I believe that companies should have a choice um, of having an, an independent nominated advisor because the market is very much characterized by nominated advisors, which can also act as broker. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and that's entities that have direct access to funding. Mm -hmm. Now, um, if we look at in practical terms, um, how does uh, Grant Thornton get involved in with the company's RNS um, announcements, and um, how can you check for whether or not the announcement is, is, is reasonable or, or, or accurate? Um, there are a, a couple of uh, co comments I'd make there. Um, the directors of a company are obliged uh, to uh, make announcements about certain 
uh, event in, 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 in the company's life. Um, so for example, if a company decides to appoint a new director uh, or, or if a di director resigns, those matters must be announced to, to the market. Um, in many ways, those are quite straightforward events. So if someone resigns, uh, the company notifies me. <laughs> You're not going to get too involved. <laughs> well, exactly. So there's, there's not too much required yeah. if, 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 if a director resigns. Um, so the, the, the announcement that goes out is pretty straightforward. It, it could be quite short, mm -hmm. saying that um, Mr. Mr. Smith has resigned with immediate effect. Um, in my role as nominated advisor, however, I would probably be digging a little bit under the, under, under the surface to see what the reasons were for Mr. Smith's departure. Um, so playing detective if you have to. Just to make sure that, 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 that there's nothing going on that, uh, that's perhaps untoward. Um, and similarly with direct, new directors coming onto the board, um, we, we have a role as nominated advisor to, uh, to fully uh, understand uh, the, the person's experience and expertise um, uh, and to make sure that the individual is an appropriate person to be a director of a public company. So we, in those situations, will do diligence into the individual uh, and indeed there will be a, a full uh, announcement about the individual and his or her previous activities. Mm -hmm. So um, in addition to uh, you know, looking at the regulatory news of companies, how else uh, might you help uh, companies? Um, so, some announcements, just, just perhaps to, to dwell on the, the announcements for a moment, uh, uh, th th there are some announcements which are quite straightforward. Um, there are other announcements which are uh, more difficult. Uh, the, the directors of a company are under an obligation to announce any matters which, if they were made public, would have a material or significant effect on, on the company's share price. Mm. Um, and sometimes that's not always uh, obvious to, 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 to people. So the way that we help companies in that respect is to have uh, an open dialogue with the directors to uh, ensure that they're keeping us fully apprised of all the developments uh, in the company's business. Um, and, and through that dialogue, we are able to determine uh, which events uh, should form the basis for a public announcement. Mm -hmm. So uh, what are the key characteristics of an effective nomad? And uh, how should these uh, characteristics uh, give uh, confidence uh, in the market for the quality and reliability of uh, regulatory news? Um, in my opinion, the, the key uh, characteristics uh, that a nomad must possess uh, are probably uh, experience. Um, so if, if, the direct, if there are directors of companies listen, listening to this or watching this, if they're thinking about choosing a, a nominated advisor, what um, it, it, does the, the nomad have sufficient experience? So ha how many has he done? Mm -hmm. Has he acted for lots of public companies in the past? Has he uh, got experience of acting with AIM companies. So I think experience is, is very, very important. Um, uh, expertise, uh, I think that's another uh, important area. Um, so who, what kind of people does the Nomad have on, on, on the team? The team should include, uh, in my view, corporate financiers like myself. I'm, I'm a corporate financier. Um, uh, are there people there who've perhaps had uh, regulatory experience? So on my team, I've had people who've worked at the London Stock Exchange. Uh, I've also had people who've worked at the uh, takeover panel, which is an important feature of UK public companies. Um, and for companies in the mining sector, um, I would expect a nomad to be able to demonstrate uh, experience and expertise in the sector. So I employ a geologist to help us with our mining companies. Okay, so what um, sort of uh, challenges uh, might a nomad face when we look at the mining and exploration sector? Um, I think probably to, to answer that question, you have to rewind a little. Um, almost to, to the time where we're thinking about taking a company, a mining company, to the market. Um, when, when we're deciding whether we should act for a company, uh, at the pre-admission stage, I think there's two things that we're thinking about. Firstly, uh, is the company uh, suitable for admission to the market? Uh, and to try and break that down, 
I guess there are two things that, that come to mind. H have, the, have the management of the company put together a, a business plan, I suppose, that uh, is coherent, uh, makes sense, uh, is it realistic, uh, and probably more than anything else, th th does the nomad believe in it? Uh, and secondly, um, looking at the management team, d does the nomad believe that the, 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 the directors and management team have the skills and expertise to, to bring the, the vision that's articulated in that business plan into reality? So th that's, that's assessing suitability. Uh, with mining companies, uh, uh, p part of that assessment um, would include, uh, again, trying to look at it simplistically. I, I want to know if the company has a good title to the assets yeah. that, it, that, it, yeah. that it purports to own. Have you had experience where they haven't had title to assets, some companies? Uh, no, because we do proper diligence, and I'll come on to that in a second. So, but, uh, but I need to know, from, from, from a helicopter standpoint, helicopter view, do, do they actually own the assets? That, that, that they say they do, um, and do they have uh, the, the licenses and the rights to exploit the assets mm -hmm. the way that they want to? So how do I satisfy myself about that? I, I, I employ lawyers on, on, on the one hand to uh, ensure that the company does actually own the properties, the assets, uh, and secondly, that they have licenses that say they can exploit the asset mm -hmm. the way they want to. Um, uh, and on the other hand, in addition to owning the property and being able to exploit it, that there's actually something in the ground. So that's when we would uh, perform technical diligence, we'd mm -hmm. have an independent, competent mm -hmm. person, is, is, is the term that's normally applied, who um, checks to see if the company's uh, uh, r reserves and resources mm -hmm. uh, are actually for, 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 for what the management yeah. are stating that they should be, they're is stating it, that they yeah. are. Is it a lengthy process or can this be um, um, abstract? The admission process can vary, but on average uh, probably takes somewhere between three and six months. Uh, and that's three and six months from the date that the company uh, employs a nominated advisor and a broker. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's getting the company to, to, to the market. Once the company's on the market, uh, particular uh, challenges that a mining company might face would be to advise the, the market of resource updates. Mm -hmm. um, again, these would have to be uh, performed by a competent person and should always be carried out under a recognized uh, standard. Mm -hmm. So, for example, JORC yeah. or SAMREC. Mm -hmm. um, and, and from my standpoint, I'd like to see the directors using the same uh, standards throughout the period that it's on the market. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's the uh, best thing about being a nomad from your um, point of view? The opportunity to help growing companies uh, get, uh, get, get, get to the market, to help them raise the funding, to bring the, the, the management team's uh, vision into reality. I'll give you an example. One of our clients, mm -hmm. Archipelago Resources, um, we took it to the market in 2003, I think. Um, its initial market capitalization was eight million pounds. Mm -hmm. It's been back to the market on 13 separate occasions, raised 100 million pounds to further develop its business, mm -hmm. um, and currently has a market capitalization in the region of 220 million pounds. Mm -hmm. So that's a success story. That's, yeah. that's something that I get a buzz out of, um, and I love working with, with the board. Thank you very much, Jerry. And you've been uh, listening to and watching Jerry discuss the role of a nomad.